heterogeneity. Some scientists love this word, and some not so much. But I think it can be really informative. We know that people age at different rates, and different organs and tissues also seem to age at different rates. But how do we interpret those differences and use that understanding to see what the causes of ageing may be? Well, hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we'll be talking about a cool new method that enables you to estimate the age of a single cell. A single cell! So to break it down, we need to first recap how you can determine biological age. So I don't just mean the number of days spent since birth. And then how you can do it for a single cell, and then why you should even care about it. So let's start with age. As I've established, here we go beyond chronological age, the number of days passed since you were born, but instead to biological age. Biological age, instead of using time as a measurement, it uses different biomarkers. Currently, these can range from facial images to proteins present in your blood, but of relevance to this video is DNA methylation, a type of epigenetic mark that can be found in DNA. The use of these measurements has raised excitement about the ability to be better at predicting disease risk, which may therefore have clinical relevance, but also to be used in research to further understand the ageing process. So DNA methylation, you can think of this as tags on top of your DNA sequence. In particular, the sites of methylation commonly employed in these studies are at certain genomic sites called CPGs, and it's the cytosine, the C, that gets the methylation. By detecting the presence or absence of methylation at these sites, researchers have been able to generate epigenetic clocks of age-related DNA methylation changes that show strong associations with age. There are different ways to track these changes in methylation, but essentially the clocks are interested in the DNA sites and whether the methyl group is absent or present. So currently, these measurements of DNA methylation used to predict biological age otherwise known as epigenetic clocks or aging clocks, they're currently measured by having a bunch of cells from a tissue sample, as you may have even tested yourself from blood samples or cheek swabs, and then the DNA can be extracted and used to measure DNA methylation. You need to have enough material for this to work, as some of it gets lost along the way during the processing, and this helps to therefore provide a more reliable measurement. And so this is from a, a population of cells, so you get an average across all of the cells. And so this is a key difference from looking at single cell approaches where you would measure the age of a single cell. But the thing is, loss of material and overall coverage goes down. So it's unlikely you're going to get a measurement for each of these CPG sites. And this is depicted in this figure here, where you can see that cell A and cell B cover different regions of a reference genome, so the total DNA sequence. Whereas in a bulk sample, you get data from many cells, and so once you put it all together, you cover a larger region of the reference genome. And so the other problem this brings is that if you wanted to compare cell A and cell B, you kind of can't so well because they don't overlap that much. And so you have limited distinct profiles for individual cells. And so if you were looking at methylation sites in a cell, you won't get a value for each one, as you can also see in this table here. So, so far, this doesn't really sound like a reliable way to measure the age of a cell. But that is what brings us on to this publication, how to address this problem and actually get an epigenetic age of single cells. So in this paper, they introduce single cell age, a framework for profiling of epigenetic age using single cell methylation data. So basically getting this methylation data just on a single cell instead of having one average data point. So to develop this framework, they had to make some assumptions and included some features. So the first problem to solve is the fact that from a single cell, you're not going to get a, a measurement point for each of the different sites of interest. And so to solve that, they could use methylation levels of highly conserved sites from bulk tissue samples. And then by having it from the bulk data, you could then kind of estimate a probability of binary methylation at particular CPG sites in any single cell from that tissue. So to phrase that in a way that I can understand, if in the bulk analysis we see a CPG site that has high methylation, then I would estimate that there would be a high probability that a single cell would have a methyl at that site too. And so effectively you can derive a probability for each CPG site based on bulk data and that would be your reference point. And then another consideration is which CPG sites are more important for predicting the epigenetic age. 
as important CPG sites you'd want to have that information for. So as not all CPG sites are going to be captured for a single cell, they developed an algorithm to choose a distinct collection of age-associated CPGs that are most age-associated. So combining that with the first point, you can estimate the probability of observing a methylated state at each of these more important CPG sites for each age, and then compare that with what values you actually measure for a single cell that you analyse. And so to get a value of age for a single cell, they assumed that each methylation state is independent, and so they can multiply all the probabilities together to get an overall likelihood of the age-associated methylation profile. The age that is most likely is therefore the predicted epigenetic age of the cell. Now since I don't think I did the best job of explaining this, I caught up with the lead author of this publication, Alex Trapp, who gives a much better explanation. Because we got single cells, we don't get all of the CPG sites, there's like less overlap between different cells. And so does that mean when you predict the age for a single cell, the the CPG sites that you use are different for each one. Absolutely. So that was one of the big things that we had to, because no method before that had done that. The, all these elastic net like tools, essentially you, you give it the, the methylation matrix that you have, and then it, it derives you a couple CPG sites that are informative um, based on the mathematics, essentially. And it uses those to predict age. But, it, but the assumption there is that all these CPG sites that it chooses should be available in any type of, of sample that you use. And if they're not, you have a problem because there are coefficients associated with these CPG sites. And if you don't have a methylation value to multiply by that coefficient, then something about the model um, will not be as good uh, as if you had all of those. So with single cells, there was no way, uh, at least with present methods, to do that since, as you're saying, um, and what we saw is that the very distorted reads, right? So one cell might have a particular set of CPG sites uh, and then another cell might have a completely different one. So what we do, is we create this reference data set that uh, kind of catalogs um, a fair amount of CPG sites, um, a million, uh, more than a million, if you want. You can, it's very flexible, so you can use any type of, of reference set. And the idea is that it maps how methylation changes in bulk data um, with age. So it may increase, it may decrease, it may not change. And so we use this reference data set and we selectively intersect it with a given single cell so that we only look at the CPG sites that are covered both in the single cell and in the reference data set. Um, and that's kind of how we get around the, the problem. And then further from that, we, we kind of rank them. There's another algorithm that we use um, to rank and filter them based on only the CPG sites that we're really interested in. So as, as I said, most of them are totally uninformative of age. So either they'll be unmethylated uh, the whole time or methylated um, uh, also the whole time. But what we're really interested in is are the ones that are dynamic, right? The ones that change with age. So maybe it'll be unmethylated or mostly unmethylated at young ages and then uh, gain in methylation over age or, or the opposite. Whether or not you understand my explanation or not, the more important question is, was all the trouble worth it? Well, in my opinion, one of the greatest advances of having single cell data is to see heterogeneity and to use that heterogeneity to explain observations e.g., and I'm being very hypothetical here, let's say two individuals both receive an epigenetic age of 55. In person A, they have a very narrow age range, whilst in person B, is very broad. This may inform that one may be healthier than the other, but I think what it may suggest is potentially the strongest causal factor in both cases. More heterogeneity could explain a senescent cell surrounded by healthy tissues trying to deal with the damage, whilst having a smaller range may suggest that on average all of their cells are just older. This may mean that despite having the same epigenetic age, the suggested treatment outcomes could differ, dot dot dot, as I said I'm being hypothetical here, but this is more of a long-term consideration anyway. In the study, they used their single cell age framework for a couple of different applications. The one I think is the coolest is how they use it to investigate early mouse development. So this is going from day 4.5 to day 7.5 in an early mouse embryo. And the reason why this was of interest is because early embryogenesis has been suggested to be associated with an initial decrease in biological age to a point termed ground zero, after which all organismal aging formally begins. And so if you look at this figure here, what you can see is that going from day 4.5 to 7.5, they see a steady and significant reduction in the predicted age 
And so this is consistent with the notion of a rejuvenation event happening in early embryogenesis to erase damage that's accumulated from the parental gamete cells so that the newborn embryo can start fresh from ground zero. Other interesting applications would be to use the single cell approach to have a better understanding of linking these methylation sites to potential functions. And one way that they could also do that is by combining these single cell epigenetic age measurements with so-called transcriptomics, so seeing what genes are being expressed in a cell. And so you can basically see the age of the cell and what it's up to. And this could also be useful for evaluating the efficiency of cellular reprogramming, such as turning a differentiated cell into a stem cell. And this process is currently quite heterogeneous and not necessarily that efficient. So combining the single cell age and gene expression in single cells is something that I expect we will see in the future. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and that you've learned something. You can catch our full length discussion by using the link in the description. And with that, I'd like to say thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.